Hello once again, audience. Where we left off, I had my friends who've never played TF2 rank some weapons from the game, and now it's time for another balance video. Cool. Finally. Jesus. Nearly a year ago, I asked you to vote on which class has the most effed up weapons in need of reworks so that I could make another rebalance video, because my last one was really, really good, and all my suggestions were really, really well received, and now everyone on the planet is just begging me to make another one. And you voted for Medic. Good choice. And while it's true that Medic has some pretty wacky weapon balance, it should come as no surprise that this likely won't take very long, considering Medic only has 10 unlockable items compared to the class average of about 15 or 16. I don't have much more to say and I don't want to waste your time, so let's just roll the intro. So let me try to briefly summarize how this video is likely going to go. I'm probably going to end up saying something about medics melee weapons that'll make a chunk of viewers irrationally angry at me. People who defend the vaccinator and say it's a balanced weapon are going to get their entire worldview destroyed with facts and logic. And I'm going to give the crossbow a vasectomy. I don't know, man. I'm just going to preface this entire video by saying that I'm not a medic main, and there are other people who have videos like this that I would say are more qualified to talk about this than I am. But even if I were a medic main, you shouldn't take anything I say as fact. And you shouldn't be a dick to me for my opinions. My opinion holds as much weight as anyone else's. I'm just putting my thoughts out there in an entertaining and digestible format for people to consider, discuss, and enjoy. That being said, I am going to be presenting my thoughts in a manner that is intended to persuade you and get you to agree with me on as much as possible. So try to keep an open mind as you watch, and I'll try to keep an open mind while reading your comments. Out of the 13 weapons Medic has available to him, I believe that only two of them should not be changed in any way at all. The Kritzkrieg and the Bonesaw. The trade-off that the Kritzkrieg provides is great and really well balanced. You build uber charge faster and greatly boost your patient's damage during your uber charge, but you completely lose the invulnerability that typically comes with said uber charge. Simple, balanced, awesome. Then we have the Bonesaw. When I was making my last rebalance video, I was going to throw in a section at the end going over each class's stock melee and talking about whether or not it should be changed. But as I was wrapping up that video, I sort of just... forgot? Now, a lot of people out there think that stock weapons shouldn't really be changed, and while I agree with that for the most part, like most of TF2's stock weapons are perfect as they are, but to say that all stock weapons should never be changed under any circumstances just due to the fact that they are stock is just... it makes no sense. Let's say that from day one of TF2's existence, Valve abided by that policy. Add and change new weapons for the game, but never tweak the defaults. If that were the timeline we lived in, there would be no air blast, the minigun would take 25% longer to spin up, Spy wouldn't have a damage resistance while cloaked, etc. So I think that stock weapons should be changed if necessary, but I don't think the bone saw should be, because I think it's a good weapon. And I'm sure some of you disagree. A lot of people think the bone saw is bad, but the only reason they think that is because the uber saw is so much better. And if you're thinking, what, no, what? That's not the reason. I think it's bad for other different reasons than that. Um, okay, look at it this way. Forget that the Ubersaw exists for a moment. Erase all memories you have of it, okay? Look! What an awesome weapon, am I right? Okay, still not convinced? Well, if you think about it, Medic is the only class in the game that moves faster than 100% speed with a melee weapon that has a base damage of 65. And it can random crit. Medic's melee is often his best option to defend himself, and because it's just a melee, it's not that great of an option compared to a rocket launcher or a shotgun. And that's okay, because Medic is not a combat class, he's a healer. What am I trying to say? The bone saw's good, alright? That's my position. Now I'm going to go over the weapons that I think should maybe probably be changed in order of how drastic my proposed changes are. Starting with the Medigun. A lot of you are probably surprised that I think this weapon should be changed at all, and uh, I'm not even really changing the Medigun. I'm just nerfing Pyro, because fuck Pyro. The Medigun should provide uber-charged players with a 75% reduction in air blast vulnerability. I think it is so fucking stupid that a medic can spend all the time it takes to build up to an uber-charge, suffering through each and every press of his team's E key, getting abandoned and endangered by his teammates, and once he has Uber, looking for the perfect ally to use it on, waiting for the perfect time to pop it, 
only for some ape-brained pyro that just spawned in to go <laughs> and come out on top. I know that the uber-charged player can kill the pyro, but it's more challenging if he's a soldier, and even if he's not, when you're getting tossed around by a pyro when you're supposed to be tearing through the enemy team, it can throw you off and fuck up your aim. The knockback can fuck up your aim, and in the time it takes to kill the pyro, he can still have done irreversible damage to what could have been a game-changing uber charge with minimal effort. I think that's dumb. I know I'm gonna get skill issued into oblivion in the comments. I know all you pyro mains out there are proud of yourself for being able to right click, but I don't care. This minor medigun buff should be in the game. I don't think it's necessary to apply to any of the other medigans because with the crits Krieg it's way 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 easier to kill the pyro. This stat already applies to the quick fix but even more so. And uh, we'll get to the vaccinator. Now in my previous balance video, I addressed the issue regarding the inequality between the crossbow and every other syringe gun, but the goal of that video was to rebalance stock and stock only. However, I alluded to a minor nerf we could apply to the crossbow that has the potential to put it on the same tier as a buff syringe gun. As you may know, if you fire the crossbow and put it away, when you take it back out, it will have magically reloaded itself in your pocket, allowing you to do things like this. Which, while this does kind of take skill to do consistently, I think, I'm not really sure it needs to be in the game. That's my one and only crossbow nerf, removing the passive reload. I think we can all agree that everyone loves the crossbow. It's not really overpowered, it's great, fun to use, awesome weapon. And this nerf doesn't really take away from any of that, right? Cool. Now let's, uh, let's talk about the quick fix. A long time ago, I heard from somewhere that the quick fix is bugged. I don't remember where I heard this, but I heard that because the quick fix has an overheal penalty, the medic's patient never reaches more than 142.5% of their max health. And mediguns have a built-in stat that slows the uber charge rate when you're healing someone with more than 142.5% of their max health in order to sort of penalize a medic for pocketing one person or to reward them for healing multiple people. You're supposed to build ubers slower if your heal target is at max overheal. And I guess that the devs just forgot to make this value lower to apply it to the quick fix? That's what I heard, anyway. Now, when I heard that, I was like, damn, that sounds kind of broken. Maybe I should start using the quick fix more. But then, not long after that, I heard that they patched this bug. Again, don't know where I heard that from, but I heard it. But neither time did I actually bother to test in-game firsthand that whether or not what I was hearing was true. But for the longest period of time, I thought that this quick fix bug either never existed or was patched. And because of that, I always viewed the quick fix as rather underwhelming, a tier below the other mediguns. And I always attributed this to, yeah, it builds uber faster, but like, barely. Look at the different function times. How much of a difference can that three seconds make? They should really bring back that bug and just implement it as a feature. And then like, a month or two ago, I finally decided to test it, and it turns out that this quick fix bug is not only in the game, but it has always been in the game. Which is just fucking wild, is it not? When I found that out, it brought me back to the day I realized Santa Claus isn't real. It was the same feeling. Oh, wait, no. Wait. Wait, stop. I... Wait, no. I was, uh, I, w I was just kidding. <laughs> Santa is real, you guys. I was just, I was just doing a little troll. Don't cry, don't cry. Just stop, guys. No. He's real, I promise. I was just kidding. So if this bug has been in the game all this time, why do I still find the quick fix underwhelming and subpar? Well, I don't know, but I do. It's not terrible or anything. I use it about as much as I use the other metaguns and still like it. But let's give it a buff anyway. First of all, I think the uber build bug should remain the way it is and be advertised as a feature of the weapon. But I also have this idea. When using an uber charge, your uber meter will drain at a steady constant rate over the course of about 8 seconds. But, if you keep swapping your beam from heal target to heal target during an uber charge, the meter will drain much faster, causing the uber to be a bit shorter than usual. This applies to the medigun, the critzkrieg, and the quick fix. But I think a nice little buff for the quick fix would be to remove that. Something that I will often use the quick fix uber for is to just quickly heal 3 or 4 or 5 low health teammates. Sometimes that's just a better option than super buffing one dude, especially since the quick fix uber is way less good at making pushes than a default or crits krieg uber. This little buff would just make that an even more viable option and allow you to get more out of it. That's my idea for the quick fix, and I don't really care what you think about it, so shut up. I only care what Jalen thinks about it. If you scroll down and don't see a comment from Jalen about how much he loves my quick fix buff, I have failed, and I'll probably delete my channel in a few days. 
So I actually really like the Amputator. I think it's pretty underrated and one of Medic's most balanced unlocks. That being said, I have two little quality of life buffs to suggest. So apparently, the Amputator provides the Medic with a health regen bonus, which was honestly news to me. I thought I knew just about everything about weapon stats in this game, but I found out about this stat through Jalen while recording the first episode of Oddmark Out. But this regen bonus is only active when you're holding the weapon out, so not when you're shooting bad guys with syringes, and also not when you're healing good guys with your medigun. I think it should be active on wearer, all the time. That would be awesome. One more thing though, a complaint I often hear about the Amputator is that you have to stand still to get value from the AoE healing mechanic. And I mean, I agree. A healing item in TF2 that requires you to stand completely still to use it, obviously that's gonna be bad, it's gonna be horrible. Items that require you to stay in place for a few seconds in exchange for a shit ton of healing are like actually worthless. Listen to me. Stop trying to come up with excuses as to why you dislike medics, other melees, and think they're bad. Just admit that the Uber saw is a problem. Did, did someone say my name? Shut the fuck up, I will get to you in a second. Anyways, listen, I agree that in the Amputator's case, standing still is more dangerous. The healing output is not as worth it compared to the sandwich, and it's a bigger loss to your team if you get caught out during the taunt. So you should be able to cancel the taunt, in my opinion. That'd be nice, yeah? That might even make it too good, but I'll see what you guys think. Hopefully these changes would make it so that when I whip this baby out and start playing it like a violin, less of my teammates will stare at me and think to themselves, Is this guy serious? As they fail to understand that they're not the only fucking person on the team that needs healing right now. Fuck off. Is it my turn yet? Oh my god, you are... you are really annoying. Why does everyone love you so much? Did you know that the medic melee the Uber saw is shut the, the shut best? The Medic Shut up. For Medic, oh did you know that? I think you didn't even know that. Uh, 25% Uber on hit is so hot. It's hey so buddy, did it. you see that? I think a free-to-play cloak and dagger spy might be hiding in that corner over there. Why don't you go swing at the walls for 10 minutes while I chat with my friends here, okay? Good boy, yeah, there you go. That's it. Yeah, I think you, I think you almost got him. Yep. Yeah. Okay, okay, alright. Alright, alright, listen to me. Would you rather be kicked in the balls, or have 50 bucks stolen from you, and still also be kicked in the balls? Just as hard. Stupid question, right? Now replace get kicked in the balls with take 65 damage, and replace have 50 bucks stolen from you with give some asshole enemy medic 25% uber, and you might start to see why the uber saw is stupid and overpowered. In TF2, there are complex weapons like these ones that have a bunch of stats, and there are simple weapons like these that have one good stat and one bad stat. And typically, these simple weapons follow a design philosophy, being that the weapon's good stat will be good, and the weapon's bad stat will meaningfully balance out the good stat. The downside of a weapon should be just as bad as the upside of a weapon is good. That way you have a reason to choose it instead of stock, as well as a reason to choose stock instead of it. Makes sense, right? The Ubersaw does not do that. This stat is very good, it's great. This stat is, uh, well, it's there. Your reason to use the Uber Saw over the Bone Saw is that if you hit someone with it, you're now 25% closer to the most powerful ability in the game. Your reason to use the Bone Saw over the Uber Saw is that it takes less time between swings. About one-fifth of a second less. Actually, a little less than that. I think the Uber Saw should have a damage penalty. You know the phrase, you can't have your cake and eat it too? Well, it's a stupid phrase, because that's what cakes are for. You're supposed to fucking eat them. So instead, let's all start saying, you can't get 25% uber on hit and deal 65 damage too. Let's give it a 45% damage penalty, making its base damage about 35. Now, the natural response to this is, isn't that kind of a buff? A medic would be able to farm more uber off of one person. And that's a valid point to bring up, that I almost wasn't going to address. I don't think that would be as much of an issue as you think, because the person being attacked would be alive long enough to actually fight back and kill the medic, or force him to retreat with the uber he did get. This is the kind of thing that you would have to test in-game to know the true effects of it, so I will be looking out for comments that have a better suggestion for the uber saw. I've heard people say that if you just reduce the uber on hit from 25 to something like 20 or 15, that would do it, but that wouldn't really change any of the critiques I have for this weapon. Just for good measure, let's increase the attack speed penalty from 20% to 30%, making that fifth of a second difference nearly a fourth of a second. I think that this change could actually be implemented and people would whine and bitch and complain about it, only to continue to use it because it would still probably be better than every other option. And if you are the guy currently typing a comment, all like, 
What about random crits? That's the real issue with the Uber saw. It crits way too much. <laughs> Will you shut up? Hey. Shut the hell up. Shut up. Shut up. Skyler. Shut up. Please shut stop. Up. I... Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut hey. up. Shut up. Shut up. Let's talk about the syringe guns now. In my previous video, I suggested these changes to the stock syringe gun. Increase the base damage and velocity of its projectiles, and give it a passive reload like the one the crossbow has. Now I mostly stand by this, because as I said, trying to hit someone with a syringe gun is like playing darts with your non-dominant hand, and reloading is kind of annoying when you could be healing instead. But I want to retract my damage buff suggestion, because I think it needs something else. And once it has that something else, it won't need the extra damage. A number of people suggested that the syringe gun should have a healing function, like the crossbow does. Which might sound like a brilliant idea, but when you really start to think about it, I mean, how much would each syringe heal for? Would you get uber for it? How much? Well, if you do get uber for it, what's the point of using your medigun? If you don't, what's the point of not using your medigun? Would it do burst healing? If so, what's the point of using the crossbow? If not, shouldn't you just use your medigun to heal instead? This pair gives you all the healing you need. Burst healing for when someone needs a bunch of health right away, and slow healing for when you need to work towards building an uber charge and or give overheal. The only real way I see this idea making the syringe gun kind of unique as well as balanced, or if it could heal anyone to full health really fast without giving you any uber. You'd be able to fully restore the health of a dying heavy at close range, but not at long range, and instead of getting uber for it, you'd just do it really quickly. But I'm still not a huge fan of that. If it were in the game, I'd like it to be its own weapon of sorts, rather than stock due to how drastic it would affect stock medic gameplay in some situations. My idea is uber on hit, alright? Now relax, it might sound overpowered, and you're right, it would be overpowered if it were like, I don't know, let's say 25% for each hit. But yeah, obviously something like that would be major OP, but that it's not that, you know, 25 on hit, that's ridiculous. I'm thinking like 2. 2% for each hit. A clip full of syringes will get you 80% uber charge if you hit every single syringe and don't get killed, which is almost never going to happen. The syringe gun would remain as the weapon you pull out when there's no one around to protect you and all you can do is helplessly fire wimpy pellets at whoever's chasing you down. This would give you more of a reason to pull it out every now and then, but won't really encourage people to play battle medic because you're still better off just using your medigun to get uber most of the time. I'm almost tempted to raise the amount of uber you get on hit, but I want to see what you guys say about this idea before I suggest anything too wild. For the Blutsauger, I would like to first apply the increased syringe speed and passive reload so that the weapon isn't terribly unfun to use, and I'd also like to remove the lower health regeneration, and that would be it. Now, you might be thinking, doesn't that just make it a direct upgrade? And well, yeah, but no, because the new downside is that it doesn't get uber on hit like the stock syringe gun does. With these new balance changes, by equipping the Blutsauger, you would just be sacrificing 2% uber on hit in exchange for 3 health on hit. Cool. I'd like to do something similar with the overdose, but instead of removing its downside and replacing it with no uber on hit, I think we should buff its upside. The movement speed bonus that depends on your uber percentage should be active on wearer instead of when you're holding it out. I'd love it if the overdose let you zoom around while healing people. Also, of course, no uber on hit, and it's keeping the damage penalty, because this is really enough. You might even want to increase the damage penalty, but I won't be doing that today. Here's a hot take, I think. The relationship between the Solemn Vow and the Stock Bone Saw is the same as the relationship between the Third Degree and the Stock Fire Axe. Main difference being that Medic's Melee is a good way for the Medic to defend himself while Pyro has a fucking flamethrower. And you might say, but the Third Degree is literally a direct upgrade and the Solemn Vow is a downside. Listen to me. This right here is the single least meaningful line of text to have ever been written since the invention of writing. The Bone Saw has an attack interval of 0.8 seconds. The Solemn Vow has an attack interval of 0.88 seconds. So like, whatever. And the benefit you get out of it is also just like, whatever. Like it's nice, I guess, but this weapon is just so unremarkable. Enter. Array 7. Well, no, he's he's not here. 
as great as that would be, but he made a really good video that provided a really good suggestion on what to do with the Solemn Vow. When I play Medic, I commonly find myself asking the question, where my team at? Give the Solemn Vow wall hacks to locate your teammates, like the wall hacks you get when you respawn, and bada bing bada boom, problem solved, and the Solemn Vow now has something. To make this mechanic balanced, it would have to only be applied when the weapon is active, and there should also be a big holster and deploy speed penalty, so you really have to commit if you want to know where your teammates are. And then I guess a 15% damage penalty or something, so there's still a reason to use stock. And I guess you could leave the old stats as well, just because they're so... whatever. Credit to Array7 for coming up with this. I really like it. The Vaccinator. I along with many others, really don't like the Vaccinator. Though this negative sentiment I have towards the Vaccinator is not as universal as something like the Scorch Shot. Here's how we are going to do this. I'm gonna break down its stats while attempting to illustrate the balancing act this weapon's trying to perform. Then I'm going to explain my reasoning as to why I think it is unbalanced. Then I'm going to try my best to tackle the most common argument I see in defense of the Vaccinator. And then I'm finally going to present my proposed changes to the Vaccinator. Now if we start by ignoring anything that has to do with an Ubercharge and the Vaccinator's unique Ubercharged ability, the Vac is somewhat balanced. You've got a 66% slower overheal build rate, which is positively counteracted by the passive resistance that's applied to both the Medic and his patient. Of course, that would make for a bit of a boring weapon, which is why there's much more to it, just about all of which has to do with the Ubercharge. The Vaccinator's Ubercharge builds 33% slower from overhealed players, but because it also builds Ubercharge 67% faster than stock, by default, the Vaccinator will always build Uber at least a little bit faster than stock. Now this does actually tie in a little bit to the previous two stats, because if you choose to pocket one guy, you'll build Uber at a similar rate to stock, but you get both benefits of full overheal as well as passive resistances. Whereas, if you're trying to keep a number of people around you healed up to about full health barring overheal, you'll build Uber much faster than stock, but you only get the passive resistances, and no one person is going to end up with a whole lot of overheal. There's a lot of nuance to this, so I'm sorry if it gets confusing, or if it takes me a while to make my point, but I think it's important that you see the big picture of this weapon. Anyway, I believe that the faster Uber build is negatively but appropriately balanced out by the fact that the Vaccinator's Uber charge is not as universally useful as a stock Uber charge. Now I'm going to start introducing the aspects of this weapon that I believe make it unbalanced. The Vaccinator allows you to store up to four uber charges that all last 2.5 seconds each, meaning a full length uber that would consume 100% of the meter lasts 10 seconds which is longer than stock's 8 seconds. You could argue that this is to further balance out the less useful than stock ubers that the vac pumps out, or that the extra 2 seconds doesn't make enough of a difference for anyone to care. But it doesn't matter because it actually doesn't last 10 seconds, it would last at least somewhere around 12.5. Because of the unique way the vaccinator works, you can sorta kinda store a fifth uber charge. I never hear anyone bring this up, but the vaccinator is the only medigun that builds uber charge during an uber charge. Every other secondary for the Team Fortress 2 medical man has a meter that will rapidly deplete over the course of an 8 second uber charge. The Vaccinator, on the other hand, immediately erases 25% of the meter and immediately begins building again while the 2.5 second uber charge is still active, meaning if you use all four charges in a row, by the time you've run out, a fifth one will have charged. Now this is not the main event when it comes to reasons I hate the Vaccinator, but it's definitely worth noting. What makes the Vaccinator so good is the freedom of how and when you can use these stored ubers. If you play a lot of Medic, you should be familiar with the pressure that comes with wanting to get an adequate amount of use and value out of an Uber Charge. It only takes 40 to 80 seconds to build up an Uber Charge, but you should understand the value of time in TF2. That time is significant, and sometimes, perhaps a lot of the time, you die before you can get that meter to 100%. But when you finally do, and you have an Uber Charge ready to use, you want it to be impactful. 
You want to make sure you don't uber the wrong person that won't be able to do much with it. You want to make sure you don't pop too early and only kill one guy. You want to make sure you don't get killed before you can use it. And you don't want some dipshit cross-eyed pyro to WM2 you into the Shadow Realm. That 8 seconds is just long enough to have a huge impact on the state of the game if used properly, but just short enough to be pointless if used at the wrong time, or on the wrong person, or in the wrong circumstances. All that to say that this is not even remotely an issue with the vaccinator. This pressure you feel with every other medigun is replaced with the pressure of having the correct resistance toggled, which, let's be honest, is fucking easy. Sure, it takes some getting used to and may be tough for a beginner to understand, but all you gotta do is press R so that the symbol on your HUD corresponds with whatever bad guy you see in front of you. This leads me to the primary counter-argument that I often hear in defense of the vaccinator. Well, what do you do against a coordinated team? What happens when you find yourself in this position? Nothing. The vaccinator can't save you from that. You are kind of fucked in that scenario. But if you swap the vaccinator for the medigun, you're not any less fucked. Yes, a coordinated team can counter the vac. Yes, a demo knight can counter the vac. Yes, a spy can counter the vac. But these facts do not change the fact that the vaccinator can do all that. Spitting bars up in here. And the met- <laughs> But these facts do not change the fact that the vaccinator can do all of this and the medigun cannot. It is partially balanced due to how much better a stock uber charge can be used to contest a highly defended position and that it can always save you from certain death while the vac is only likely to. Hence why most medics prefer stock, but the vaccinator is not fun to play against, it's not fair, and it's not hard to use. So how do you think I would change it? Well, despite all that shit talk, I like the vaccinator's concept. Resistance toggling and storing multiple uber charges is cool and unique. I don't wish to do away with that at all. The issue boils down to the enemy feeling too punished just for the medic having the correct resistance selected, as well as too much freedom when it comes to using uber charges. First things first, the uber meter should be divided into two sections rather than four, with the length of each uber being increased to 4.5 seconds to compensate. Uber charge should build half as quickly when one of them is active. All of that should appropriately neuter the freedom you get from equipping the vaccinator. As for the issue with your enemies feeling too punished, let's replace the punishment with a reward. Instead of passively resisting 10% damage to the selecting type, 30% of damage done to your healing target should be returned to the medic as health as long as the corresponding damage type is selected. 30% may be a bit of an arbitrary number, and I'm sure if this was actually implemented it would require some fine tuning, but you get the idea, and I'm pretty sure it's a good one that retains the core concept of this weapon. That's the vaccinator segment. It's the longest one in this video, and will probably be the longest one in the series, but we'll see. So before I talk about the Vitasaw, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. One day, me and my friend Nerdsauce were watching TF2 videos together in a call, and stumbled across the worst weapon for every slot. And it was fun to watch. We got to predict what the creator of the video would pick, we got to pick our own and have interesting disagreements and discussions, but then the video got to Medic's melee slot, and Carter 5 Under says that the stock of Bone Saw is Medic's worst melee weapon, and not the Vitasaw. I don't have the full thing, but here is a short clip of my reaction to hearing this. I don't get any value out of the fucking weapon that well, I'm using. But, I mean, you're gonna it's die terrible. as Medic. The Vitasaw is worthless, and it's like the only weapon in the game, <laughs> aside from like the Razorback or something, that needs like a full rework. It's just fine, it's terrible, it sucks cock and dick and balls and ass. <laughs> this shit can <laughs> You think this is <laughs> So, I really don't like the Vitasaw. Just because it's the worst melee option for Medic, and some people think that title belongs to the stock Bone Saw, and because I just completely disagree with its design. Just, okay, picture this. It's early 2010 at Valve headquarters. Some members of the TF2 dev team are on lunch break, and one of them brings up the topic of what new weapons they should add to the game. Someone suggests a rocket launcher that doesn't deal any damage so you can practice rocket jumping with it. Someone else suggests gloves for the heavy that let them run a bit faster. And then you've got the guy who's all like, What if, what if, there was a weapon that let the medic keep some of his uber charge on death? Everyone else is like, okay, I, I guess that's a cool idea. And you know what? Maybe it is a cool idea, but it isn't by any means a good idea. This whole aspect of the weapon needs to be scrapped. 
It's just fundamentally bad and not fun. No one likes to die when playing TF2, and people really don't like to die as a medic when they have a considerable amount of uber charge. So you have a weapon that requires you to experience one of the most disappointing things in the game just so you can get value out of that weapon. That value being that it's just a little bit less disappointing. It also lowers your survivability with a health reduction of 10, as well as by forcing you to risk your life to collect organs, but I don't know, maybe that's a good thing because you need to die in order to benefit from this weapon. No one is going to be actively using this, hoping to get utility out of it. Retaining Uber on death is a bad mechanic and I'm getting rid of it. Instead, what these organs should do is increase your max health by 15 for each one you collect with a maximum of just 3. I mean, after all, it is called the Vita Saw. Why not make it increase your vitals or something? I don't know. <laughs> and since I'd also like to increase the max health penalty from 10 to 15, this would make your max health with 3 organs collected 180. There should also be a damage penalty of about 15% because you shouldn't be able to get that much utility out of a weapon and still be able to use it for damage as well as you can use stock for damage. Now because every saw's number one competitor is the uber saw and they're all constantly losing that competition, I'd like to say that I think this is a good buff slash rework that allows the vita saw to be somewhat level with the uber saw. By using the new vita saw over the uber saw, you're sacrificing the ability to risk your life in order to gain uber charge faster for the ability to risk your life in order to gain better long term survivability. Okay, this is the end of the video, uh, but stick around if, if, especially if you disagree with something I say in this video, uh, because I have something that you might be interested in if you want to uh, debate me or discuss it with me one-on-one -on -one in a Discord call uh, in, another, in like about a week or so. If I sound different, it's because I'm recording this part like a full month after I recorded all the other audio for this. Here, here's what I want to do. My Discord server is going to be linked in the description of this video. If you would like a chance to speak with me directly about anything regarding this video or anything I've said in the past that you might take an issue with, or not even an issue, and you just want to discuss something, join my Discord, go to the roles channel, and give yourself this role. I haven't decided, I haven't set it up yet, and I haven't decided what the name of the role is, but it's going to be on screen right now. Join the Discord, give yourself that role, and if we get a certain amount of people, let's say like 50 people, who join and give themselves that role, then I will host a sort of event where... I have a bunch of people coming and talk to me. Now, it doesn't have to just be in regards to this video, because I am going to be releasing something within uh, about a week that I think a lot of people are not going to like. A lot of I'm going to make some enemies with this next video, okay? But it's an April Fool's video, and so it is a joke, but due to the nature and the, and the subject of this next video, some people are going to fucking hate me pretty soon. And it might be you. Two weeks from the upload date of this video, I will host something, and it'll maybe be fun. We'll see. Thank you for watching. I'm going to end it here. Peace off. Boop. Subscribe.